Hello everyone. So this is the video about system design. Uh, I am going to start a new playlist in which I will be covering every system design topic in detail. There are tons of videos available on system design on YouTube, but they cover each topic on a superficial level. I don't like that. What I want to do is in this video, I will just cover the uh, systems in high level, a generic system. And in later videos, I will try to dive deep into each component, each system, each part one by one, and I'll break it down to such a level, which will give you a clarity on what to use and when to use. For example, when to use MySQL, when to use NoSQL, when to use Cassandra, when to use MongoDB, uh, and other things like uh, when you should use, uh, what kind of message queue, should you use Apache Kafka or should you use Apache Pulsar or uh, should you use RabbitMQ? So these all things I will cover in my later videos. So let's start this video. And in this video, we are going to scale our systems from one user to one billion users. So this is the most simple form of a system, client, server, and a database. This is something which happens when you are making a system or making a client server interaction application in your laptop or in your computer. For example, uh, just take the case of PHP. In that case, you start your server on XAMPP, you use MySQL database and your computer is your client. So this is the most simple application which one user can use. Let's see what we can do next. Okay, we have our database. So let's suppose we have multiple users, but they don't come at the same time. So every hour, let's say we get one, one user or every five to 10 minutes, we get one user. So every user puts their data in the database. But what happens if the database crashes? In that case, the data loss will be there. So what we do is we replicate our database. We distribute the data in multiple databases to prevent data loss. So this is called database replication. Next is how do we handle concurrent requests? So in that case, we can give multiple servers. Uh, another way is like we can have multi-threading or multi-core CPU, but that limits our number of users to the number of cores or the number of, uh, or the degree of hyper-threading. But for that, for handling concurrent requests, what we need is multiple servers. Another thing that we need is load balancer. So if we have too many requests and only one server is getting all the requests, so that server will become a hotspot. For that, we need a load balancer, which can distribute the load evenly on multiple servers. Okay. And there are multiple algorithms which load balancer uses to determine which server it should send the, uh, send the request to. So that we will cover in detail in later videos. So there are different algorithms like round robin or consistent hashing and many, many more. We'll cover them. Next is what happens if all our requests go to the same database? In that case, what we can do is we can use database sharding. So we can split our database into multiple databases. We can split our records into different databases. Like for a particular record, I want them to go to a particular database. And for another record, I want them to go to another database. In that case, we use database sharding. So, okay, so this was database sharding. Next is, what, how, how do we decide which database shard and to send the data to? So there is one thing like uh, indexing or depending on the index, we can send the database to database shard, but there is one more thing called load balancing here also. We want our database data, we want our data to go to particular database and the load on each database should be handled properly. Next is cache. So if we want to make our reads faster, in this case, we use cache. There are different policies of cache like write through, write back, write ahead, write around, but we are not going to cover it here. I'll cover them in a separate video in detail. In this case, what servers will do is if they have to read something, instead of going to the database, what they will do is they will try to read it from the server uh, cache. If it is not present in the cache, then it will go to the database. One common mistake that people make here is they show this thing connection between cache and database like if there is a cache miss cache will take the data from the database no it does not happen cache and database do not talk they always talk through the server so cache 
if there is a cache miss then the server will go and take the data from the database and then populate the cache so this is something to be kept in mind next is cdn this is the case what happens is suppose our data our primary server is in us and our request is coming from south africa the distance between us and south africa is too much and so the data transfer rate will be slow in that case we need a cdn which is located in south africa and any requests any static kind of request which we can uh, get or which we know that it is frequent request we can take it in the cdn and display it and only when the request is not there in the cdn requested data is not there in the cdn we will go and fetch the data from the real server and again populate the cdn so that it can be fetched from the cdn only next is again the load balancing on cdn because there might be multiple requests and cdn should also fetch uh, should also handle the load balancing and only those requests should come to cdn in a load balanced manner next what happens is sometimes we need to handle our requests asynchronously in that case what our server will do is the server will take our request and go to the message queue uh, give it to the message queue message queue for example let's suppose somebody liked your photo on instagram and uh, not somebody there should be it's like okay you posted something on instagram and all your followers need to know that you posted something so in that case it is easy if you have 10 20 100 followers but what if you have millions of followers in that case it will be the request will be sent to the message queue that okay it is there and your notification about your posts will be distributed to your followers in an asynchronous manner like uh, a few people will get the requests now a few people sometimes later because it is not a priority they should not get it on time like right now in that case what happens is we can use message queue and this i believe handles everything all the system like on a superficial level there are many nuances to it in which I will go in detail in later videos and for now that's it so thank you for watching and please remember to like share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one